G'day guys, welcome to uh, another episode from Empty Nest Adventures. I'm Ant and the beautiful Dee will be stepping you through this, uh, uh, the rest of this video a little bit later today. So, we've had a heap of questions and people picking up on photos that we put on social media and those sorts of things around how we set up our camp and what we've done with the van and those sorts of things. So I thought we'd pull together a video to try and step through things that we've either purchased or seen or done to the van that makes our life easier when we're on the road, makes our setups easier, makes our comfortability better and those sorts of things. Um, and I'm not going to feature the van, although uh, everybody knows that we, we love our little van, but um, we're not, I'm not going to talk through the jail today. I'm going to talk through things that we've done, um, as I said, to just make our life easier. So if you come around to the back of the van, Dean. First thing is a best inline water filter it's between the tap uh, wherever we're staying and the van. So this little beauty um, is really straightforward. Uh, water comes in here, it's filtered through here and then runs into the actual van. Um, that filter itself cost us 110 bucks from Caravans Plus. We went and picked it up in Queen BM, but they posted out. So uh, even though we've got a filter inside the van, we decided that this inline filter is just another safeguard. The beautiful thing about this filter as well is if you unclick it and then reverse it and just run some water through it, it's self-cleaning. And um, I've been surprised. Some of the places we've stayed on have been on desal water. Uh, others have been bore water and those sorts of things. So um, a really good filter. You, you'd be surprised how much brownness comes out of this thing when I reverse. Uh, feed it and clean it out so really easy takes about 20 seconds to clean all right um, quickly come around this way this is our generator slide which we don't use we actually use it for our barbecue which I'll show you in a second when we first left we thought that we weren't wouldn't need a barbecue we wanted to save some weight so we just took one of these grill plates again I'll show you that in a second but we found really quickly in particular for me I do love cooking in an oven. So the barbecue that we bought wasn't necessarily um, to, to, to cook steak and snags and those sorts of things, but to have an oven on hand um, to do a roast and those sorts of things. So I'll show you the rest of that in a second. Grab one of these from Bunnings before you do your trip. That is a 15 amp to 10 amp adapter. It's fully waterproof. We've actually been to a couple of caravan parks, even though you'd think that they'd use a 15 amp lead everywhere. Uh, but a couple of uh, caravan parks that we've uh, been to, we actually only had a 10 amp plug. So yeah, uh, this adapter is really, really useful. 15 amp um, cord goes in there and it just adapts it. It's got a circuit breaker on it. It's fully waterproof and sealed. Uh, so that's a really good piece of kit. Get a couple of containers just to throw all your hose fittings and those sorts of things in. And a couple of these gray bags, which I didn't like at first, to wrap your silage hoses up and those sorts of things. But um, they're actually uh, really quite handy. Camping shop, 10 bucks I think for each bag, or 15 bucks mobile, I don't know. Um, but really, really handy. That adapter came from Bunnings, I think it was about 60 bucks. So again, for the sake of having power when you paid for power at a caravan park, it is quite handy. All right, let's have a look at my little Ziggy. Oh, gee. <laughs> Where were we when we uh, decided we needed the barbecue? Uh, Mount Gambier, I think we bought it from. Yeah, nice. So we'd uh, travelled the east coast fairly quickly, but um, as I said, I just felt like I needed an oven. And the, the, the big decision, and I don't want to start a debate here whether you should go for a Weber or whether you should go for a Ziggy, but uh, I know that that debate's had a million times. The reason we went for a Ziggy is simple. A Weber can't do this. There's a dirty baking dish in there. But what happens is... Uh, when I store in that tunnel boot that I just showed you where the generator should go, this actually sits so low that all of those things that were just in there can actually be uh, used. So, um, thumbs up for the Ziggy. So I mentioned a little bit earlier that uh, I was using a flat plate to cook on before I bought the barbecue. And we still use it actually, particularly on short stayovers where I don't want to get Ziggy out of the tunnel boot and set him up on the table and those sorts of things. So we've got this plate Mrs. McGuire wanted me to get rid of it, but it's actually really good. This side does snags, that side does steak. It's really quick and easy um, to, to clean up. Let's take it over to the camp kitchen and sort of away you go. Uh, a, couple of, a couple of questions that we've seen more recently about kettles and those sorts of things. 
You can get 12 volt kettles, this and that. Good old whistle kettle. Buddy does the job, and this one's been in our family for about 100 years by the looks of it. But <laughs> still does the job, it still boils water quickly. Um, when you set up, you've got your gas going, it is perfect. So one of the challenges that people that love coffee have when they travel is what do I do for a solution where we're on, when we're on the road? And I've seen people putting big expensive coffee machines that you have to switch your inverter on, probably drain the battery more than you need, need to. Before you leave on your big trip, get yourself one of these mocha pots. These are amazing. All you do is put your coffee in the little funnel in the middle here, your water in the bottom, tighten it up and cook it on the stove and it actually brews like a barista quality coffee. It is unreal. Exactly the same that you get out of an espresso machine in, uh, in a fancy cafe. We also froth our milk in a little Breville milk frother. Runs about 800 watts so we do have to switch the inverter on but um, froths our milk in a couple of minutes and we've actually got like cafe quality flat whites just out of our tiny little stove top doesn't cost as much as a, a, an expensive you know $1,500 coffee machine and it carries it, there's no very little weight and very little space that it's required to uh, get yourself around the country so thumbs up the mocha pots are awesome all right moving right along this is my little beer mug that I got from beer farm you may have seen my post about beer farm and how much I love the place but this um, this little pottery mug when you put your beer in when it's nice and cold out of the fridge stays cold for ages and it's just a little bit different I think it's cool to have a little beer mug rather than just a stubby holder and a, and a stubby or a can in it so um, get your chance to find a cool um, pottery beer mug it's cool <laughs> oh, Mavis is rolling her eyes Random. all right next thing uh, that we wouldn't leave home without this is available at Bunnings. It's called a Thermocell. It is awesome. Um, we're here at Kalbarri, which is one of the most beautiful places on earth I think I've seen. Um, but last night, the uh, the uh, mosquitoes whipped up pretty chronically. So uh, I'll Movo whacked this on and in about 10 minutes, it created this invisible perimeter around us and there were no mozzies. I think they're about 60 or 70 bucks from Bunnings. Huh? Yeah, I think so. And yeah. you do have to buy like little fuel cartridges and, and the insect repellent to replace. But um, if you remember to turn them off every time you use them, you only have them up for about a couple of hours, I would say at a time, unless you're having a big night under the awning. But um, these are amazing. Um, I wouldn't leave home without it. You don't need to spray yourself with Rid or AeroGuard or anything like that. So you can jump into bed um, and feel like you don't need a shower. The next thing, a lot of people have um, commented on a lot of our social media posts about the drone footage that we take. So this is Daryl. Daryl's our drone. He's a DJI um, Mini 2. Um, for, so for under a thousand bucks, this guy takes 4K quality um, video. He's only 249 grams when he's got his battery in him. And I tell you what, if you've never flown a drone before and you're nervous about it, it took me about three flights to get up to speed. And I've only been flying in for three months and a lot of you will have already seen some of the footage that we've managed to capture in the Voight Vantage Point. So massive thumbs up to this DJI Mavic Mini 2. Um, it hasn't got the follow me feature that the $3,000 ones have. And it doesn't have sensors all around, but it does have a sensor in the bottom. We haven't had too many near misses, have we, hun? Which haven't been my fault. So, <laughs> so I would say that um, the Mavic Mini 2 is an awesome drone for beginners. And it's also, you know, you're not gonna be as upset if you dip $1,000 into the ocean as you do if you dip three and a half thousand for the more expensive drones. All right, onto a bit of a safety hack. Um, and there's so many things, satellite, do I get a satellite phone? Do I um, get a garment? What do I do for emer do I get an EPIRB? So what do I do for an emergency situation? This product we got from Anaconda, you can get it at a lot of camping stores, is called a Zolio. The company is based in Brisbane in Australia, which is another reason I like it. But this is the most amazing unit. So what it does, it acts like an EPIRB. So you press the SOS button for three uh, minutes and it's got exactly the same function as an emergency beacon, or it is an emergency beacon, but it does a whole lot of other things as well. It connects into the Iridian network or the satellite network. <clears throat> so all you need is line of sight to the sky 
And then there's an app on my phone and I'll put a couple of screenshots in the video, but it then becomes a communicator for you while you're off grid. So what it will do is the app Bluetooths to the Zolio device. It gives you a new number because it's got a separate IME in it, but what it will then do is allow you to keep in contact with the people who know that number that you've already contacted when you set the device up and let them know one, you meet your next destination and you're safe and those sorts of things. You can also have like old Mavo likes to do long te top text conversations with her friends. So you can't send pictures, you can't get on the internet with this device, but you can text your loved ones and your friends and your family to let them know that you've reached your destination, that you're safe. If I press this button, this tick button on the, on the device, it automatically sends our GPS coordinates um, to the three numbers that we've got set up in the device. So from a safety perspective, one click of the button, it's awesome. The other thing that the app does is it uses the Iridium network to get things like news updates and weather updates, and we've used the weather updates a few times. So um, massive thumbs up to Zolio. There's lots of videos on YouTube if you want more information on them. Um, we activated this at Sejuna when we were about to go across the Nullarbor because we are doing a fair bit of free camping there. We've used it on a lot of the national park camps that we've done. And we'll, awfully, we'll use it an awful lot more as we get further north of Kalbarri here and quite remote in WA. So um, get yourself a Zolio, think about the safety, think about making sure you let your loved ones know that you're uh, safe. So um, awesome product, I can't rave about it enough. Another thing that we decided to do when we left um, Brisbane is that we had just the super cheap or the Bunnings um, camp chairs we got them for like 35 bucks and to be honest they're good if you only use them once or twice but realistically um, they're they're rubbish so we went to uh, the ARB shop and actually got ourselves some ARB camp chairs um, they're actually really light they're very sturdy I think they take up to 150 kilos which is enough for me and Movo to have a cuddle on and um, I know they're branded old man emu but they're um, ARB They've got the side table. It's actually quite good quality. You can sit your dinner there if you want. If you need to get out of your chair and do something, um, I can't rate them highly enough. Actually, they pack down quite small too. Yeah, they actually. That's a really good point. When you pack them down, they actually. Oh, I won't undo the clip and that sort of thing. But they do fold up to like a foot square. Um, we actually travel with them in the back of the car rather than chucking them in tunnel boots. So um, they are really, really quite versatile and handy. All right, so let's talk about awnings. Um, I've got to say, a lot of these hybrid imports, and I know other people are watching have got different caravan setups and those sorts of things, but awnings is a hot topic when you're caravanning. And um, probably the, the one thing where you, you're gonna break something when you're on tour for an extended period of time, like we did when we were recently at Margaret River, drinking wine and eating cheese, and came back and our awning had fully collapsed. Now, I don't Un think... Under rain. Under rain, yeah. Yeah, so I don't think it was actually a quality issue. I actually think that it was the fact that we got a freak storm that wasn't forecast, 40 mils in half an hour, and it just couldn't cope. This had sagged. So we've made a few provisions here. To be really honest, we're going to replace this awning as soon as we get back to Brisbane after this big trip, um, because I want a good quality, like a Bundatech or something like that, which opens up. But to get us through um, to the end of this trip, this is what we've done. We've added one of these super peg curved rafters. I think it was about 35 bucks from a camping shop. Drilled a new attachment in there for it to hook up at the awning end. And some people aren't gonna like this, but I've just drilled through the fascia of the box awning, just so that that's nice and stable. You could actually run a peg back to the ground and give it a third leg as well. But it just gives the awning a bit more stability. So for a $35 investment and a you know a few minutes drilling in some extra holes and that sort of thing. I think that was an eight and a half mil drill bit if anybody's wondering it fits in there really nice and snug. Um, do it and make sure you set them up when you're at camp because you never know when you're going to get a freak storm. While we're talking about awnings there's a couple of other things which I think are game changers. These navigator straps again got these from the ARB store not only do they have the spring load at the bottom, but what I love about them is they actually run into the sail track. So most barrel awnings and most box awnings actually have a uh, sail track on them. And it just gives you a really quick and easy setup, but also a really stable setup. 
So um, a big thumbs up to these. They take about a minute to set up and uh, I reckon for what they are, almost it's almost like a seatbelt material. A lot of people think it's a ratchet, but it's not. It's just a big clip, a bit of seatbelt material and uh, keep your awning nice and secure, even in 40, 50 K an hour winds that we've been through since we've had those. Um, I'd also say when you're strapping your awnings up, go four points of reference to the ground. So we've just got these ARB, um, they've got a uh, uh, guy ropes, they've got a carabiner on the end of them here. So it's, again, it's a really easy clip into that little latch that's there. Spring loaded at the bottom, really good as, a, as an extra point of reference. And the last thing, these, uh, screw in tent pegs have been amazing i've probably talked about them in another video 20 bucks from bunnings um i think there's a pack of about 15 12 15 i can't remember exactly how many are in there um you get a little uh, attachment for your drill they drill straight into the ground and they've been amazing uh not real good in super sandy stuff but um you should be carrying sand pegs if you're going to go go to the beach so these straps i think were 50 bucks 52 bucks or something like that yeah something like that great investment when you've got you know two thousand bucks to replace your awning and the inconvenience of having to get it replaced really good investment these arb stra uh, guy ropes i think were 20 bucks um so uh good investments to keep your awning for longer even though i'm going to replace it because i just want something a bit more sturdy but um it'll get us by it'll get us by so i've probably talked about this on a previous video but um i can't emphasize enough that you need to get yourself a crock bin so um how much you love it <laughs> yeah the crock bin was like 30 bucks from tent world and it's it's a game changer um what you do with your crock bin is you sit it in your tunnel boot or wherever you store your stuff you pull it out put a bin liner in it i've attached the bracket on the drawbar here or on the stone guard of the drawbar and literally your bin set up how good <laughs> You got a nice solid lid on here. We've camped where there's lots of kangaroos, lots of birds, mm. lots of critters getting around. Haven't had mice yet, but we heard that there were mice just up the road, so be careful. Um, the addition of the mesh on the version two, uh, I believe that the original crop bin doesn't have that mesh, but this is just, um, it's a game changer for 30 bucks. So easy to set up once you put the bracket on. It also comes with a bracket that you can put around your awning legs. We did that for a couple of stops and then then thought well, Too much there's got to be a better way because it <laughs> was taking us three minutes but anyway put this uh, bracket on there and it's amazing I probably so will good. paint it black because I'm a little bit lame but um, anyway awesome yep. if your van is like ours uh, and it just had a little water spout uh, for your water outlet on here I've got a tap pretty straightforward I forgot to put the handle in there but um, it's nice to have water that can fill into a bucket rather than shoot out at old Mavo there. So uh, that's a good one. Um, Scrunnel funnel. This has been awesome for when we're using the jerry can to fuel the car up when you're doing long distances and those sorts of things. This actually screws in and sits in really nice and secure into your fuel tank. And it makes it so much easier to pull your diesel in without having any spills and those sorts of things. This was 35 bucks. They're actually made by a guy up in Toowoomba. I can't remember his name, but Scrunnel Funnel um, is the brand. As I said, 35 bucks posted out to you. Um, I've only used it a couple of times because we've only used a jerry can a couple of times, but it is so good. You can put 20 litres of diesel back into your car and don't spill a drop on yourself, which is uh, better than pouring diesel all over yourself. So, um, scrotal funnel is awesome. I think that's about it for the outside of the van, Mavo. Is there anything else that you can think of? What about, oh. what about the hose um, Yes. Tap? The, ho the hose hack that we did on the drainage and also one more thing point uh, a couple more things uh, 10 amp extension lead um, we didn't leave home with that but if you're running a fridge in your car um, you know how quickly the battery depletes when you're parked up and you're not doing much driving in the day for the DC DC to recharge so um, I know this sounds really simple guys but I actually had to go out to Bunnings and grab one make sure you got a 10 amp which will lead from your external GPO on the van plug into the 240 volt in your fridge because it just it, it saves the battery particularly when you're off uh, particularly when you're parked up and not driving the car too much to recharge the battery let's have a look at this um, 
post set up as well. Um, one of the things that we learnt really quickly, uh, one was that the white concertina hose that came out of here was really bad, particularly if you jammed it in because it had just got destroyed. Um, but two, every campsite is different. So for our sullage setup, we've put a cam lock on the bottom of this which clicks off at the end of every trip. Then I've run this sullage hose, but what I've done with the sullage hose is modified it so that it comes in three separate lengths now and we just use these joiners every time depending on what our campsite looks like so some campsites we're just going to go straight to the bucket which is why we've got this really short hose coming off it's here. coming out sorry hun. it just oh, <laughs> oops. um these hose joiners i think are about two dollars ninety at bunnings but they're awesome um get it for i think it's a I think it's a 15 mil silage hose or a 20 mil silage hose i can't quite remember but um you simply connect your joiner and then you've got a longer run here, which is at this park here in Kalbarri, they like us to water the grass. So we're running it out to the grass. Um, and I've also got another length in the van. So if we were running back to a drain or a sump or something like that, that we can then just use another hose joiner and extend it out. So instead of carrying around one 20 metre hose that you've got to unravel every single time you get to a campsite, whether you need a metre or 20 metres, we've now got like a bit more of a system where you can be a bit more customizable depending on what your site looks like so again for a couple of hose joiners it cost $2.95 at Bunnings it's such a good idea all right I think that's about it for the oh one more thing I've already talked about these but muck mats these have been really really cool we've got um, they now come in grey too which um, I don't know they kind of look like grass which is cool but um, if you if you're into the more of the grey look um, then I think that's a, a large muck mat. Uh, yeah, we use that outside all up. the time. We don't always use it because sometimes we get our sea gear mat out, but at this site we've got this nice slab and it's not too messy, so we haven't bothered. And then we've also got a muck mat that goes into the door. That one lives there permanently. It's actually it's actually stretched a little bit to when we first bought it. Yeah, true. Um, but it fits in there nicely into the step, and it means that whenever somebody's running in and out of the van, you're not only wiping your feet down the bottom, but you're wiping your feet there and it keeps it nice and neat and tidy. I hope you enjoyed all these hacks, guys. We're going to jump in the van and Mavo's going to run you through what we've done on the inside. All right, so we're in the van. So my advice in the van would be a hat hanger. It's awesome. It holds all, all our hats. It stays like that most of the journey, unless we're really off road. I might come back into the van and I'll find one on the floor but general driving, it just stays there the whole time. And it's out of the way. You got um, that on Facebook Marketplace? Yeah, I did, yeah. Some lady made it, but uh, maybe our daughter-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> she actually makes them as well, so uh, yeah. Ping us if you like the look of these hat hangers and we'll hook you up with Tiles because she, uh, she's now making them and she's doing an amazing, amazing job with job. her macrame yeah. stuff and she does other designs as well yeah um oh th this is the uh the milk frother that you were talking about earlier yeah so it's really simple um you just pop your milk in there up to the nearly up to the max line and pop there her on and press the button we just make sure it's hot enough for our desire and away you go um so uh other hack things uh, drop bear storage containers are really cool, really awesome. Just pop our keys in it. We've also got another one over there as well that we pop magazines or books or anything like that in. Um, Kmart. Kmart <laughs> is fantastic for just little basket things like headphones in there. This is a bit of a junk corner, so apologies, but you know, just your know, little knick-knacky things. This one over here holds the TV remote, which is really cool. I've actually um, stuck this one to the bench just with those little Velcro round um, sticker things. So that one actually never gets put away, is never moved. Um, what else have we got? Oh, from Kmart. Um, get yourself a couple of these, uh, really cool easy bags they come in different sizes i think oh, i've got a banana in one of those <laughs> <laughs> they come in different sizes so i mean this is i take this to the shower with my clothes and my and i take my towel i mean this one i've just taken to the beach um you can hang your fruit in them they're really cool 
Um, make sure you get some hooks because yeah. you need plenty of space to hang your jackets and these baskets. Are they things. 3M hooks, huh? Yeah, I think they are those ones. Yep, yeah. just from Bunnings. Pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Uh, oh, inside bin, yeah. really handy. I mean, this one you can actually hook to your cupboard in a bigger van, but when we set up, I just like to hang it, um, just pop it up there. Um, yeah, the Sorocco fans, definitely put those in. Get rid of the other crap that comes with your normal van <laughs> and put Sorocco's in. Highly recommend those because you can do, you can move, oh, you can move, <laughs> you can move them around when they're turned off and you can change the speed. So when we pack up, we just pop them down like that. But when we want to get going, you set them up, you can set them at three different speeds. Yeah, they go 360 degrees. So if I'm laying over on the bed like King Farid, I can actually just angle it and it goes straight onto me. Yeah. It's just so nice. Yeah. And they're really quiet too. You don't notice them when you're sleeping unless you're an uber light sleeper. Yeah. Doesn't um, she look cute today? No, I don't. I don't feel that great today. Um, the other thing is um, fusion, fusion hooks are fantastic. These have never come off in our travels at all. We've done a fair bit of off-road stuff too, as you may have seen. Yeah, so we've got the cup, we've got the, the little hand towel hook. Um, oh, get yourself a squeegee um, to squeegee down your shower because um, obviously you want to keep it nice and clean. Fusion locks are amazing. I think like something like that's about 50 bucks from Bunning Sun, would you say? Yeah. 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 They're a little bit expensive, but they're, oh, they're well worth, worth it. Worth so every good. Cent. Yeah. And the other one holds the toilet roll, which is oh, in yep. the cupboard. Um, what other hacks? Um, Laundry basket. For up these there. type of vans, we we pop it up high out of the way. Um, oh. With all your cords and bits and pieces, get yourself one of these little handy cord holders. We find that really good. Living in such a small van, you've got to you've got to remember to clean up after yourself, otherwise you end up with crap everywhere. So you have to be quite disciplined when it comes to that. Oh, Mavo's disciplined. What about your um, vitamin container? You want me to talk about coin, that? Coin hacks, yeah. Are you sure? One of the things when you're on the road is you need coins all the time, whether it's for washing machines and dryers or Mavis playing the pokies or yep. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but if someone breaks into your van and you've got a bags of coins lying around, it's not a great idea. No. So, so Mavis and Tails came up with this beautiful idea. Yeah, we just put all the coins in containers like this so that it's ready to go. Um, there's another one of those handy baskets. Um, again, came up. Those little bags are so handy. So. Obviously that's my wash, my um, clothes washing detergent or powder, but I just got myself a little container and then another one of those little containers with your coins in it. And that's what I take up to the laundry when I go and do the washing. And then again, another one of those little bags holds all the pegs. Mm -hmm. So these Peg. bags are so handy, so like handy. It small handbags at Christmas time. <laughs> that hold all your goodies and hold it all together. Oh, what about your the um, wine. your smelly pack? Oh yes, I'll do that. That sounded really bad. <laughs> Before I move on to that, um, we keep our keys in the top drawer here. We just went to Bunnings and I just got little, um, I don't know what you call those the little key, 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 ring. key holders. Yeah, but I just got two and stuck them either side of the drawer. Um, another hack is get yourself a couple of these reusable packs, see through, so you can see obviously what's in them. But they've been really handy for like little bits and pieces when you're on the road. Uh, you know, when you attach the hose and it it's leaking and you Which need happens. some. Definitely. It does happen and you need some plumbing tape or you know just easy stuff to get to. Um, oh, another no hack tape. is um, what is this? Um, yellow, it's just electrical yellow electrical tape. tape that we use. We pop it on the windows outside. On it, the lights. Oh sorry the windows. The lights outside it apparently 
don't hold me to it. Stop smallsies. It deters the, the mosquitoes, apparently, yeah. with the softer yellow light as opposed to the brighter white, white LED, light. LED light. So yeah. that's what, that is what that is for. Um, now. The smelly pack. <laughs> Don't, call, Mavo's it, don't really. call it that. <laughs> this is a great idea though. I love this one. I saw this. This isn't my idea. I saw this, um, I think it was Facebook or something. So I, I thought I'll try it. Um, I'll just reach past you. When you're off grid guys and you're using the toilet for ones and twos, um, and even when you've been living in the van for a while, as neat and tidy as we are and as religious as Mavo is at cleaning, there are the odd smell that comes into the van, so this is this is to kind of combat that. How do you do it, maybe? <laughs> All right, so get yourself a nice smelling candle of your choice. Um, burn it, and then obviously burn it for a, a while, maybe a couple of hours, and then when the wax melts, you pour the wax into just a Ziploc bag, which I've done here. You pour it into there, and then um, as you're traveling, the lady actually said leave it zipped up, but I actually un unzip it and um, just leave a couple of those around the van, and the smell is gorgeous. It's the candle smell. I don't know, when the van warms up, quite possibly that's what makes the, uh, I don't know, the scent yeah. extract. Come I on. don't know. And I've got another one. Oh, there's another one here. So that's just a little hack you could do. Just keeps your van smelling nice. Again, yeah. people may not care about how your van smells, but um, I think it's lovely. Yeah, and signature it's, scent. it's light, it's cheap. I don't know. Is that it? I think that's it. I think that's it. I um, mean, if you're in the design phase of building a van, one thing I will show you, I've mentioned this about Ajara a lot, the number of power points that are in this van are amazing so there's a couple under there and there's another one down there's another there. one down here so um yeah the more power points the better particularly if you're using a laptop a drone two phones ipads uh gopros and all of those sorts of things it's amazing to have that many power points available to you um i think that's about it so thanks for watching guys um Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you found something that you could add to your van setup. I know a lot of these things are pretty basic, but yeah. um, you know, these are bits and pieces that we've picked up on uh, as we've traveled from other campers, from our owners groups on Facebook and those sorts of things. So we hope you enjoy it. Oh, don't forget to subscribe uh, Instagram at empty underscore nest adventures and Facebook at official empty nest adventures.